The museum is happy to host this press conference this afternoon. Although this museum is dedicated to telling the story of the American experience in World War II, the board and staff recognizes the veterans that we honor in these walls and the veterans of subsequent wars and conflicts that worn the uniform in defense of our freedoms and have much in common. I know of no veteran who has ever seen combat who does not bear the scars of battle, some visible, some not. Many of our veterans over the years have returned with the invisible scar of post-traumatic stress and with traumatic brain injury. These are tough injuries, injuries that without care can lead to great families, loss of jobs, and illnesses. Several months ago, our mayor pledged to lead an effort to end veterans' homelessness in New Orleans by the end of 2015. It was a major challenge but one that he was willing to tackle with the help of many that are here today. For a report of the results of those efforts under his leadership and a very quickly end to veterans' homelessness here in New Orleans, I'm pleased to welcome the mail Andrew Mitch. Bill, thank you very much. I want to thank the PA Museum for hosting us again for what I am so proud to announce is a great day for the people of the city of New Orleans. As we sit uh, in the bosom of this World War II Museum, as I have said many times from this very spot, uh, freedom is not free. Uh, it needs to be earned every day, on a distant shore and at home. Uh, and our veterans do that for us. We commemorate them in many, many, many ways. Uh, but one of the things that has happened is across the nation we've had too many veterans that have become homeless. And as we follow that very strong American pledge, never leave anybody behind, it just doesn't mean on the battlefield, it means it's home as well. And so I want to thank the DA Museum for having us here today, and I want to thank all of the partners that worked with us on this very important initiative. Some of them are with us today. Uh, Major General David Mize, who is the chair of the Military's Advisory Committee. Uh, Martha Cagle, who is the Executive Director of Unity. I know you have some board members here. Uh, and Anne Oliva, who is the Deputy Assistant Secretary for Special Needs for the Department of Housing and Urban Development. Thank you for being with us today, Anne. Uh, Dr. Stephanie Rapaski, the Associate Director of the Southeast Louisiana Healthcare System. Laura Zollinger, Executive Director of the U.S. Interagency Council for Homelessness and Travel, to be with us. Thank you so much for being with us today. Bailey Crow, the Executive Director of the National Coalition for Homeless Veterans. Sam Joel, who is a policy advisor in my office and helped lead this effort. Uh, Mr. Michael Washington, a former homeless veteran, is with us today. Michael, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, Fernando Rivera, who is our new Director of the Southeast Louisiana Veterans Healthcare System, and to all the homeless survivors, uh, service providers, and of course all the military leaders that are with us today. We couldn't have done this without you. Uh, Captain uh, Mel Rubles, Chief of Staff of the 8th Coast Guard, Brigadier General Sheridan, Louisiana National Guard, Colonel Rick Hansen, Army Corps of Engineers, uh, Commander Rob Pritchard, Naval Air Station, Joint Reserve Base in New Orleans, uh, Colonel Wayne McGee, 377th Theater Sustainment Command in Bell Chase, Colonel Steve Goudini, Marine Force Reserve, uh, and of course, all of our elected officials with us. Our council members are here today, Council Member Brissett, Council Member Gidry, and of course, uh, our veteran on our city council, uh, Council Member Gray, and we have state senators and other elected officials. Thank you all so much for coming. And of course, to the dedicated team uh, out of City Hall, Ellen Lee, Tony Fossi, and Tyron Brown, B.B. St. Romain, hands on deck, uh, and also all of our former team members, Brian, thank you so much, Brian Lawler, uh, and Stacy Horn Koch, and of course, to Louis Zervigon, who uh, is the head of the New Orleans Interagency Council on Homelessness, uh, as well as the champions uh, and partners at other agencies, James Tardy and Gary Ward from the VA, Greg Fortner and April Kennedy from Hanno, Robbie Keane from Unity, uh, and Trajan Caller, all staff members from the Volunteers of America. That's a lot of people. That's a big team. That's a lot of folks that came together when they were called and responded in a very wonderful way. Six months ago, uh, I attended a meeting at the White House at the request of the First Lady uh, on behalf of the President of the United States. 
And on that day, the First Lady, on behalf of the President, issued a mayor's challenge uh, to end veterans' homelessness by the end of 2050. So, as we do in New Orleans, because we are this nation's most immediate laboratory for innovation and change, and we run to the fire, not away from the fire, we leaned in. And together, uh, I said that we were going to end veterans' homelessness in New Orleans by the end of 2014, a year ahead of everybody else in the nation. And today, I am proud to announce to you that we have achieved and we have fulfilled that promise. We rolled up our sleeves in this city, and we brought together the city, the Veterans Administration, Unity, our interagency council, our business community, our armed forces. We brought together the House, Department of Housing and Urban Development, Department of Social Services, Department of Health and Human Services, Department of Veterans Affairs, uh, and we basically said horizontally and vertically, all the way up and down the chain, all the way across, with our private sector partners, our faith-based community, and our active military, that we were going to maximize every resource that we had at our disposal to achieve this goal. We engaged local active military servicemen and women, and thank you all for responding to the call because we knew that veterans who were on the street, veterans who were homeless, would respond to their brothers and sisters who were serving in active duty, and that turned out to be very, very powerful. Marshall helped lead that effort. I thank you uh, for that. And now, your city, the city of New Orleans, is the first city in the nation to answer and to respond to this call. We have ended veterans homelessness in New Orleans. When we started six months ago, uh, we did a point in time survey that Unity conducted for us. We identified 193 uh, homeless veterans living on our streets. With that goal in mind, as we kept working, we didn't just hit our mark, we actually exceeded our mark by permanently housing 227 homeless veterans. connected to permanent housing and the supportive services they need, and like everything that we do in the city. It only works if we have partnerships. And so, uh, to Major General David Mize, and to Marshall Hebron, leading our boots on the ground effort, I want to thank you all for bringing everybody together and helping to make this happen. I want to thank the Merrow Foundation and our friends at First NBC Bank, particularly David Anderson, who's with us today, and Ashton Ryan for your charitable support. And our congratulations to the men and women we're represented today. Thank you very much for working with us, uh, and I know that you know that uh, you'll, you'll always be in our thoughts and our prayers. But, having said that, this is a wonderful milestone that we've achieved. Uh, it's important to understand an obvious truth. Uh, our work of transitioning people, homeless veterans, to safe, warm, and permanent housing is never, ever really done. A veteran can become homeless tomorrow. That's why we went beyond housing just 193 uh, and created a new sustainable rapid response outreach model that works and combines all of our available resources and engages our local, our local and active military. This model will build on the success we've already seen in reducing veterans' homelessness before even accepting the mayor's challenge. Let me give you some numbers. In 2012, veterans' homelessness was down 66%. Uh, we already opened the first VA center providing day shelter to non-veterans as well as vets as a community resource and referral center. In 2013, we collaborated with Nora VA Hanno and the Downtown Development District to commit home funds to this particular effort, and we were just selected by HUD as one of four national best practice models for ending homelessness. Today's success is just another step in a progress that started many, many, many years ago on behalf of the city and unity. In 2007, there were over 11,600 American citizens that were homeless on the streets of New Orleans. In 2014, that number has reduced, been reduced by 83%, and now we count 1,981 homeless people on our streets. That's way too many, but that is a magnificent drop from when we started this work so that we know that it works. Our success here in New Orleans in reducing homelessness is based on a sustainable rapid response model that we can take nationwide. We hope to share what we've learned here today with the rest of the country because we have become this nation's most immediate laboratory for innovation and change. It takes partnership. It takes coming together. It takes having common purpose, and it takes having a mission. 
having a timeline to hit is important as well. And it's important for people who want us to know when we put our mind to do something, we can always outcompete anybody else that wants to challenge us. We took on this challenge. We made it happen sooner than anybody else in America. We have helped save lives and the lives of people that actually helped save our lives as well. So life always comes full circle. And I am really proud to have been a very small part of this incredible effort that all of you put together because this was a team effort. It really matters, and I think it sends a real symbol to the rest of the country. So God bless you all, and thank you very much. Good afternoon. It was my privilege to be able to coordinate the veterans and active duty support for this effort. And I want to thank the local commands here for giving us access to their volunteers and what a great uh, response we had. We had over uh, 150 uh, uh, individual efforts by uh, some veterans and mainly active duty folks to go out and look for uh, and find these homeless veterans to, uh, as the mayor said, uh, give the credibility that the uh, program we were offering uh, really was a, a good program that they ought to take full advantage of. We even then helped uh, some of the homeless move in by moving their furniture into uh, the new houses, etc. So we have some of the uh, volunteers here in the audience today. How about let's give them a uh, round of applause. You know, talking to some of our military volunteers, there was another kind of upside for them uh, as they saw this process and all that was going on here. It was really uh, reassuring and uplifting for them that the community and the nation was concerned about even the uh, most downtrodden of our veterans and they valued them that highly and they went to that kind of effort and expense to uh, take care of them and bring them back into the fold. And so I think that's very satisfying to, for the active duty as well as the veterans to know uh, what a commitment our country is making to those who have served for us uh, in the military. The other thing that I think was remarkable about this effort, which was a, a great part of being involved here, was how each of the many partners, uh, and it takes many, many partners to make this happen, really bought into the mission here and getting this goal accomplished. And with the commitment that uh, the whole team had, they were, over, uh, were able to overcome a lot of barriers you often find, uh, bureaucratic frictions and uh, finding money and things like that. And when the team worked together like they did, it's kind of amazing what they were able to uh, produce here. So it was really satisfying to be a part of that effort where everybody pulled together, found a way to make things happen, and it just makes you wonder and wish we could do that in a lot of other areas uh, around the community and the country and we'd be a lot better off for it. This is a wonderful example when you do pull together through all levels of government and with nonprofit and volunteer folks, you can accomplish uh, wonderful things. So uh, my hats off to the mayor for valuing our veterans uh, so much, uh, putting a real priority in this effort and uh, pulling things together and making it happen. And I think for all involved, there's a great deal of satisfaction and a lot of well done and this is a great achievement for, for the city and the community today. Thank you. Please welcome Dr. New Orleans has been addressing the difficulty of homelessness with significant success for several years, and ending veteran homelessness did not happen overnight. This has been a key driver for our VA for several years. It really gathered momentum when our former director, Julie Cavalier, who recently retired, became personally involved in the initiative. This past summer, with the commitment of many partners, we were grateful that the mayor placed a renewed interest and focus on this endeavor. As you've heard, our ability to end veterans' homelessness is a result of partnerships. Partnerships like working with Unity and the active duty military to conduct daily outreach both day and night. Partnerships with HANA and the Louisiana Housing Authority to share housing vouchers. Partnerships with HUD where we've received 694 vouchers to permanently house veterans. And coordination at the VA Community Resource and Referral Center where 13 partners work on a daily basis to provide services to our citizens with over 42,000 interactions in just the past year. But it's also because of the many individuals who work every day, on the streets, on the front line, who build the relationships with our veterans. Those relationships help get people into services, 
helping people during their most vulnerable times. We've demonstrated that our teams are both compassionate and engaged, but they're also effective. They've met this challenge head on, and we've been successful. VA is committed to beginning this and continuing this endeavor. We have 51 staff who will continue to conduct daily outreach, assist with permanent housing solutions, and of those 694 housing vouchers, 691 are in the hands of an individual veteran, with more than 91% being housed for over a year. That shows that we're effective, that once we are able to get people into housing, we're able to keep them there. But for us, it's also about helping them develop their lives and becoming um, a whole person, helping them with job training, education, and medical care. Our goal is to not only house veterans, but also care for the whole person and help each one become a successful member of our community. The key to achieving our goals was partnerships and the individual work on the front line. And on behalf of our grateful heroes, we thank you for the commitment and dedication in helping those who selflessly protected us. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to everybody. Um, and thank you for being here today for this incredible and important event. Uh, on behalf of Secretary Castro and the entire HUD family, including our local team, who is, uh, I have some of my folks here, Earl Randall, Cheryl Crow, and Cheryl Williams. Um, they're here with me today. And our team in DC, who are so excited to have me be here in person today. I want to congratulate all of you, all of you, on uh, the achievement that you're announcing. I want to congratulate you for not giving up when the city saw a more than 300% increase in homelessness in the years after Hurricane Katrina, including a 1,400% increase in chronic homelessness. I want to congratulate you for fighting hard for our veterans who fought hard for all of us during their military service. But most importantly, I want to thank you for being the people who show the rest of the country that we can end veteran homelessness. This dedicated and focused team of leaders and frontline workers from Mayor Landrew's team in City Hall, Martha Kegel and the staff of Unity, Greg Fortner at the Housing Authority, um, the VA Medical Center team now headed up by Fernando Rivera, uh, my own technical assistance team who has been here on the ground every step of the way, and all the people who work at each shelter and homeless service provider um, within the city. All of those people have worked tirelessly, not only to find and serve every veteran who is experiencing homelessness um, in the city, but to put in place the changes that are necessary that the mayor talked about to make sure that a home can be waiting for every veteran who, received, who uh, experiences a housing crisis. These people that I just mentioned, and the countless others that I can't mention by name, but you know who you are here, um, have embraced partnership and taken on this challenge with outstanding results. On a personal note, I want you all to know how incredibly proud I am that New Orleans <coughs> is the first city in the nation to end veteran homelessness. I have a long history with homeless services here uh, in New Orleans, and I've worked closely with many of the providers and leaders in the aftermath of Katrina and over the last 10 years, um, and have seen firsthand the barriers that all of you have faced and overcome. I want, I want you to know that the country is inspired by your leadership and by your work, and we will do everything that we need to do at HUD to make sure that other communities see this, understand what happened, and can take the model that you've built here and uh, apply it in their own communities. And so, Mr. Mayor,
On January 2nd at 6 p.m., the 227th homeless veteran on our master list was moved into his own apartment. The mayor. I haven't told the story of how we got this last veteran housed, but the truth of the matter was that at four o'clock came the word that the veteran had suddenly decided not to move in. He decided to stay in his van. And at that point, I said to the case manager, please tell the veteran that Mayor Landrew personally is requesting that he move into his apartment today. At six o'clock came the word that the veteran had moved in. <laughs> I'm so grateful to everyone in this room for making this happen. People work night and day. Um, the VA has always been leading the way on this issue, and they've been a wonderful partner. Our SFVF partner agencies start Volunteers of American Hope Center, along with our shelters, day and night shelters, are on the front lines every day, every night, along with our outreach team. All of our government partners, HUD has been by our side every minute for these many years, as well as the United States Interagency Council that provided critical help on this initiative. The state of Louisiana, Nicole Sweezy, Michelle Brown, all of your staff, you're awesome, you've been a rock. Um, Housing Authority of New Orleans, wonderful partners. Philanthropists, you help make this happen of all levels of wealth. Colleagues and nonprofits around the nation taught us critical skills and the active duty military. You're our heroes. And most of all, the veterans who've been suffering in homelessness all these years, you have really given us an important model of the resiliency of the human spirit that we all can learn from. Because you never completely gave up hope. be able to give so many homeless veterans a forever home when most of them were chronically homeless, the overwhelming majority disabled, a quarter of them turned out to be elderly. It was incredibly challenging, but extremely exhilarating for all of us. It's shocking that so many veterans who risk their lives, and they all risk their lives, whether or not they serve combat. When they signed up, when they were enlisted, they knew that they could be called into combat. And because of that fact, they put their lives on the line for all of us so that most of us, including me, didn't have to. And so we owe it to them. And it's been just an incredible privilege to do this work. It's shocking that people who's, who risk their lives for us would then have to be reduced to foraging for food on the street, using the sidewalk as their pillow. And so I thank the mayor for deciding that that wrong had to be righted immediately. And it was an incredibly emotional experience, I think, for every one of us to be part of this in bringing all these veterans finally home. And so I look forward to continuing to work with all of you because now the challenge is keeping veteran homelessness to a functional zero by making sure that every veteran who gets pitched into homelessness in the future because of poverty or disability is housed within an average of 30 days. I look forward to working with all of you to make sure that we do that. I love all of you for working so hard on this and I thank all of you.
Unity. And okay. uh, I want to thank Unity for possibly saving my life. Because I don't know if I could have survived if I would have went out on the street. Okay. On behalf of all homeless veterans, I want to thank you. Proved to all of us that it can be done. 
It proves that ending homelessness for veterans and for all Americans is possible and within reach. Again, congratulations and thank you.
Uh, I'm very proud of what we have done in this city with veterans. But I'm even more proud of the strong men and women who have served this country and who have not always gotten what we should have given them. I was lucky enough to grow up in VA housing. Uh, I didn't realize that I was lucky enough that because the whole subdivision was VA, that I grew up among a lot of strong, powerful men in a time when it was hard for a black man to be strong and powerful in Louisiana. Uh, but that was a great privilege for me. I didn't even understand it until later I looked back on it and see what was special about Boundary Street and Scotland. Uh, I say to the veterans who are sitting in front of me, I say to the one who represents the veterans, uh, thank you. Uh, some of us pay a smaller price than others, uh, but we all realize the price we might have paid. And we're all thankful, everyone in this room is thankful to all of you for what you have done. And I must say that those of us who only spent here three years in the service, and, and no matter how hard that three years was, I don't know that it measures up to those of you who devoted your life to the service. Uh, thank you. Uh, I had three uncles, three of those uncles, uh, uh, Uncle G.B., Uncle Bobby, and Uncle D. Priest were career veterans, and Uncle Leonard Forrest was career veterans, career servicemen, I agree. Good service, man. And I realize the extra uh, price that that uh, involves. Thank you very much. And James, after all of that service, that didn't prepare you for, to be in political life. <laughs> <laughs> let me uh, let me end this wonderful event by uh, saying to uh, men and women. You have served us, thank you so much. When you were called to secure our freedom, you did. This nation made a commitment to you that we would not leave anybody behind out on the battlefield uh, and not at home. And I hope today is a very small repayment of the sacrifice that you have made for us. We should not let any veteran uh, go without the services they need, uh, without a home they need, without a job that they need. This city uh, has made a commitment to that. And it would not have been possible again for the com completely unbelievable amount of uh, teamwork that has been done for all of you here. We have sent a signal to the nation uh, that not only is this a moral imperative, not only is this something that we can aspire to as a nation, but it's something that we can actually get done. Uh, and we got it done in New Orleans first. And I want to thank you for the work that you have done. And I'd like to also thank you for the work that you're going to continue to do. Because as we said, keeping it at a functional zero is going to be important because we all know that we're going to have veterans that fall on hard times and we need to be there for them uh, like they were for us. So God bless you all. Have a wonderful day. And God bless the United States of America.